Hello everyone and welcome to Block Gems. On this channel we talk about what is going on in the NFT space in a non-fungible token world and today we're going to talk about uh, NFT art, so basically how you can buy and where you can find uh, art on the blockchain, NFT tokens uh, that represent uh, artistic works on the blockchain and which are the different platforms available out there to buy and sell these uh, uh, artworks. So I wanted to start from Nifty Gateway because this platform here, uh, it is probably the easiest one, the most accessible one for whomever is not an expert and wants to move the first steps in this world. The reason why I start from, from this one is because it allows you to buy uh, NFT tokens, uh, non-fungible tokens, uh, even in the US uh, dollars, actually only in the US dollars. So you do not have to have some Ether on your wallet to start collecting uh, Nifties. You can just go ahead and uh, buy it with, uh, with your credit card as you would normally do. Uh, there are mainly two ways that you can start uh, buying uh, NFTs on um, Nifty, Nifty Gateways. One is via the primary market, thanks to the drops. And how it works in, the, in that case is that uh, some exhibitions are presented at a given uh, time and date and you need to tune in at a specific time and date to uh, make your offer in case it's an auction or make a purchase in case it's an edition uh, with a specific price, a fixed price. And then you can buy from the primary market, meaning that you will buy directly from the platform where that exhibition has been featured for a very limited, usually it's a very limited amount of time, it's a matter of minutes. So you need to be on time. And uh, as a second uh, opportunity, uh, there is the secondary market, of course, where you're buying from other collectors, uh, collectors that either bought in, uh, in turn from other collectors or they bought from the primary market. And as you can see, also the secondary market is in uh, US dollars. Um, another interesting entry is Rarible. So Rarible is very different from uh, Nifty Gateway in, uh, uh, in that it allows literally everyone to start uh, creating their artworks or to start minting their tokens in general. So um, you can uh, go ahead, put up your uh, image or GIF or video or audio um, uh, file and transform it into an entry on the blockchain. And this is particularly interesting if you're starting out as an artist. Uh, doesn't mean that there are not uh, recognized and renowned artists in the NFT space. Actually, there are many famous and uh, uh, recognized artists that use uh, Rarible extensively and that sell their art on uh, uh, Rarible extensively. But uh, on Nifty Gateways, you have a selected um, group of artists that are selected by the Nifty, Gateways, uh, the Nifty Gateway team. Here, instead, everyone can just post what they want. There is a verification system uh, as some collectors and artists uh, can be verified by the team so that um, it's a sort of filter for quality if you want or for uh, at least a minimum of uh, history that uh, the particular collector or artist has. Um, and I also started to mint my uh, artworks. So if you, if you guys like the channel and if you guys appreciate this type of content, uh, please consider uh, buying some of these gems um, and uh, uh, um, it would be a way to support this channel. So uh, very similarly to Rarible is uh, uh, Cargo. Uh, the name of the website is cargo.build as you can see. And here you can find uh, um, a very similar concept uh, uh, to uh, Rarible. Uh, however, here you can mint token even without uh, Ether on your wallet, meaning that you can buy credits that allow you to mint tokens, and these credits you can purchase in US dollars. Uh, similar to what we have seen instead of Nif on Nifty Gateway, here you also have some featured uh, artists. It doesn't exactly equate to the concept of a drop because uh, these uh, artworks might have been produced a long time ago. Uh, they're not being dropped at that very moment. Uh, so this is just a showcase rather than a drop. Uh, 
Uh, another very interesting uh, entry is uh, Super Rare, and I particularly like Super Rare because uh, it was one of the earliest players in, uh, in the NFT space. Uh, and actually, to whomever is, uh, is really accustomed a little bit to buying and selling um, NFT uh, art, uh, artworks, they, they are probably familiar with, the, with his name, with, with Super Rare. It works a, a little bit different from what we have seen in, uh, in other platforms, on other platforms, in, uh, in the fact that uh, here you're buying directly from uh, the artists and the lines between the primary market and the secondary markets are a little bit blurred because uh, you are, are buying here from a, an artist when you see it, you know, as in this case, the artist and the owner are uh, the same person. It probably means that uh, you're buying directly from him, so from the primary market, uh, or you might be buying from a collector as you might be seeing in, in this case. And there are instances where you're buying on auction or you're buying from a fixed price, depending on what the uh, collector or the artist wants to do, of course. Uh, what is also interesting about Super Rare is that you need to apply in order to become a featured artist. Uh, in other words, it's not like on Variable where everyone can start producing their own content and can put up for sale whatever they want. But there is a, a, a verification process that's particularly extensive so that only artists that have some sort of history can uh, actually go ahead and put up for sale their, their art. Um, another um, platform that has some similarities with uh, the entries that we have seen so far is uh, Maker's Place. So Maker's Place works a little bit like um, uh, Nifty Gateways in uh, that it allows for drops. Uh, in other words, it allows you to buy um, artwork directly from the artist. So in Nifty Gateway, you buy from the platform. Here you buy directly from the artist. But similarly from what we have seen uh, on Nifty Gateway, here you do buy at a given uh, time, at a given date that is being specified by the platform. And then also, of course, there is a secondary market where you can buy from artists and collectors. Um, as, uh, as you would expect. Also, what is interesting in a, a market in Maker's Place is that you will be able to buy in both Ether and Fiat, typically US dollar. So you retain both features, which is pretty interesting because it allows for a, a, a large market, uh, a large public to access these, these, these kind of products. Another new entry, um, I need to say because it's a relatively new platform, is uh, Mintable.app. Um, in this platform, it is interesting because you can uh, buy and sell in, uh, in US dollars, but also when you want to start creating your uh, artwork, you, uh, you will do that by using, uh, using US dollars. And uh, it is uh, very uh, interesting what they want to do with uh, promotion. So they want to allow certain shops to promote the content they produce, the art that they produce uh, using their own channels. So for instance, you can be featured in their newsletter uh, just by buying promotion. It is a rather new platform and still uh, trying to uh, pick up adoption. We'll see how that, uh, that evolves. Uh, the async.art uh, marketplace is probably one of my favorite uh, because uh, it has developed a feature that I have not seen anywhere else and that it is uh, very, very uh, innovative, very unique, and uh, it could add to the originality of the content that the artists produce and publish on this specific platform. Uh, the feature that I'm talking about is the so-called autonomous features for an artwork. For instance, uh, let's imagine that uh, um, this, uh, this uh, painting here is connected to uh, a data stream that streams the, uh, the hours of the day. The artist would be able to connect the color of the sky with the 
uh, with this data stream so that the sky changes color depending on the hour of the day. This is just an example that I'm inventing. I have no idea which autonomous features this artist has, has chosen, but this could be uh, one of the things you can do with uh, uh, async.art. So uh, there are also, there's also the possibility of splitting an artwork in several layers. Uh, and it is very, very innovative and a very, very powerful uh, idea. So not only you're buying an artwork that is uh, saved and stored on the blockchain and uh, every transfer is also saved and stored on the blockchain, uh, but you're also buying a piece of art that might have some features that do change based on a stream of data decided by the, the artist. Um, similarly to this concept is the concept uh, uh, of art blocks. Um, art blocks is based on uh, the idea of generative art. Um, basically, every time you make a purchase, a uh, new artwork is generated specifically for that purchase. So in a given edition, for instance, Chromi Squiggle here, you have 10,000 max uh, artworks that can be produced, but you do not know in advance how the artwork is going to look like before you buy. You are going to know more or less the theme in the sense of the style of the project, the style of the artwork. You can uh, browse a little bit from what has been already minted. But every time you buy an entry, you are buying an, an artwork that is going to look differently based on some parameters, which could be when you bought it, or it could be as simple as what is the public address that bought it. Uh, and this is a pretty innovative idea uh, and with a pretty strong artistic potential, I would say. Now, Another market that uh, attracted my attention is Known Origin. It is very, very similar to mm, some mm, of the platforms that we have seen before. So, so it has drops and it has a secondary market. So it has these, uh, both these features of primary and secondary market, primary from the artists and secondary from collectors on the same platform. And the reason why I'm, I'm featuring here is because what I liked about uh, the Known Origin idea is that uh, they have... Uh, dedicated a space called journal to the stories that are connected to the artists and the artwork that are put up uh, on for sale on the platform and i think this is a very interesting idea specifically because in this world in the nft world content is absolutely the king so uh, the the quality of the content you're you are uh, attaching to, to to your platform the, the quality of the stories that you're putting up for sales ultimately and the artists that you're featuring the higher the quality of the the, the platform that you that you built of, or the, the 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 marketplace that you created so um i uh, i really appreciate this uh, this uh, this uh, twist this idea uh, that uh, non origin has uh, now this is a bonus entry open c uh, consider a bonus entry and this is because open c is primarily a secondary market for collectors. Of course, there will be artists that will mint their own tokens somewhere else and sell it here uh, as a primary sale. But mm, for the direction the market is taking right, right now, I believe that this is a corner case now and it's going to be more and more a residual, uh, a residual situation uh, and, and that mostly people, buyers, collectors will buy from dedicated platform and OpenSea will remain more and more a secondary marketplace. But the reason why it is very interesting is because OpenSea is one of the earliest uh, players in the NFT space and you can find uh, a lot of stuff specifically because uh, it is highly interoperable with so many uh, of the platforms that I mentioned before. So all these artworks that you bought from other platforms, you will be able to resell them here just by connecting your wallet. Of course, you need to have that artwork on your wallet. Now, on this topic, on the topic of interoperability and topic of uh, minting that we just touched upon in this video, I will be creating uh, specific content so that I can um, discuss in more details uh, how a tool such as OpenSea can be pretty uh, a pretty valuable uh, entry in the toolkit of a collector. And with that, 
thank you for watching the video and uh, see you uh, in the in the next video bye